Good afternoon. Welcome back. Hope you had a lovely morning. Um, I'm here today with the lovely Craig and we're going to be having a, a fantastic craft along today with the Winter Sparkle Collection, which um, was absolutely ma amazing, mad when it first came out. You really, really love this. bundle for you which is just in front of me here and um, so you're going to be getting a lot of the things that Cray's going to be using in the um in the in the craft along here but you won't be getting absolutely everything um, but in here you'll be getting a mixture of different all those sorts of kind of things but also have a look on the website because some of the items are available separately as well um Cray what have you got for us for this craft along looking comments that you've been waiting for as well if you are relatively new to us and you're thinking well they're doing a craft along but they don't have all the products the reason we do a craft along is for everyone that is able to get the initial about four weeks after mm -hmm. and do a craft along with us so for everyone that's already got that whole bundle you can be making this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first We're going to be decorating the front. We're going to go into little tabs at the side. You can maybe make little lists if you want to. And this one here, the little gift box, this has been measured specifically to fit four of Yankee Candle's relatively new pack you like in here but with this one here the base of the box stays in place and then the lid is which original set I think we've I'm not sure if we've still got some of that left but if you've got the big bundle you're of course going to have that 3d folder we're going to do a little bit of your Cut in, we're going to do stamping. We're just going to have fun, and trust me, it will take about the two hours to do this one. Fantastic. Do you want the shopping list? Sorry, yeah, Becky. No, no, and I'm looking go. forward to this because I think it's a, a, such a beautiful item. Um, you can definitely be able to use all of the um, the different elements that Absolutely. you're going to be showing us in this, this with any of the other. 100% absolutely spot on there Becky you could be doing this you know with tis the season if you wanted mm. to vintage snowman if you want to you can be doing that of course this is all about Sarah's signature winter sparkle collection now what we do do on a craft along is we will give you a little bit of warning on our social media of the shop right now so here we go what you will need to create this book box craft along with the winter sparkle is a3 centura peril you could use a3 multi-purpose card if mm -hmm. you want now that we've got that available that's yep. up to you i'm using a3 centura peril your gemini junior your midnight quick dry ink pad your noir black alcohol proof ink pad your little edge crimper tool six by six matte and layer dies and your score master scoreboard mm -hmm. Now the additional elements that you're going to need is your stamping mat, your 4x4 stamping platform, you're going to need foam pads, tacky glue, tape pen or double sided tape in my case, red liner tape, pokey tool, large guillotine, scissors and a sanding block or a little bit of sanding paper, something that we can do a little bit of sanding back. That's what we are going to need to create our craft along. Now, whereas Becky was saying you could use a completely different collection if you want to, instead of using midnight quick dry, you might want to use another color. Instead of going in with some of the dyes, you might want to change them if you want. It's up to you. You can either craft along and use exactly what I'm using, or you can mix and match. You can skip elements, you can add elements, it's entire if you do want to take advantage of the price that we've got for this um, collection if you do want if you've already bought it and you want to add to it you've already started crafting with it and know that you're going to need that we've got together here at the moment um, so inside here you're going to be getting your snowflake corner die you'll be getting your winter um, frost cut in panel die um, you'll also be getting your um, 
your stamps in there you'll be getting that snowflake die which is like half a snowflake that you can put together and create I can't, I'm just trying to find somewhere to put my water bottle I'm just going to put it on the floor um, yeah you're going to have um, that snowflake die that you saw on the um, earlier show you've got your shimmer sprays you've got glitter you've got sequins and you've also got your gilding flakes in the silver the price for this is £60 or $77 your platinum price is £48 or $61.60 lots of people have messaging in and saying hello Anne Marie says hi everyone hope you're having a good day crafting Becky nice it was blazing hot we were all complaining about how hot we were but now it's a bit chilly um, Flora says good morning from California um, Janet Boyd says a good morning from rainy much appreciated Michigan uh, hi from Louisiana is Deborah I'm so glad to join you after 16 weeks of being unable to watch or craft have been having seen I'm back. Terry says, are you crafting along, Becky? I'm not. I'm going to be watching, but I'm going to be taking some notes. I have got a pen and a piece of paper, um, so I can take some notes for next time I'm here. Um, Craig, uh, Margaret says, Craig, your makes are with this are absolutely beautiful. Um, so lots of people are very excited. You might as well get started. Get started. Let's do that. First of all, you probably were able to gather from that shopping list you are going to need your uh, winter spark. This is, there is a lot of mats and layers. I could not do a craft along or a project without mats and layers, of course. So it might seem daunting at the start, but this is what we're for uh, when it comes to the craft along. So let's start. And I'm also going to see is I have written this whole craft along step by step. You can see, John even wow. seen it come out the be photographed and popped on my social media it will actually be transferred onto my social media so you're going to get nice crisp clean to make sure please 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 print it out copy it replicate it take note of your heart's content so that will go up later on today right with the outer box so what we're going to Now, what I need to do, when I take this one, you will know the size of it, both sides aren't going to go through the guillotine. Mm -hmm. So this is where I'm going to use my pencil, my ruler, and I'm also going to be using that one because I've taken out the swivel head. I want to have the straight of it, which I can just use my glass mat. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go that way for a second, George, so that you can see. So I'm going to mark at eight inches mm -hmm. and I'm going to do the same. So there's my eight there so that I've got my eight inches. So that we can then join up. A bit of difficulty from lining up something that is quite long and elongated. What I then will tend to do is I will just uh, give it a visual look but what I'll do is I'll roughly try and get it as straight as I can I'll pull my ruler down and then I'll start to line that up again so that I get that in a perfect line and I have to say <laughs> pretty much spot on mm -hmm. and that just by chance just by chance on that one but there we go so we've got that at eight inches and what we also need to do then is come along at 16 and a half inches so if we come all the way along you will just spot just under the Crafters TV logo. I'm going to pull this down a second. I've even done it so that it is the full length of A3. So you okay. don't have to do any trimming whatsoever. Great. So what I can then do now is come along with my ruler. I'm going to go in with the metal edge, of course, to the side. And then I'm going to come along and I'm going to start at the top and line my ruler back up. And with my to do is I like to go just a few times and then I get heavier and heavier handed each time so we're going to pull that along to finish it off 
and now we've got the measurement that we need, which once again was 16 and a half inches by eight inches in height. And that is our initial uh, size layout for our book. So then what I'm going to do, you can do this on your smaller scoreboard. It will just mean as though you're going to have to move your cardstock because we're going to measure quite far. up against the lid side. So I'm going to pop that one up. We're going to come along to seven and a half inches. And similar to my craft knife, I do little light pressure and I do it a few times. Keeping it in place, I'm then going to move along to... This has given me my central spine and I am scoring on what I would class as the pattern side. And when I say that, of course, I'm scoring downwards. Yeah. So then, with my score tool, we're going to fold that one over, fold that one over. Really good burnish on that side. And that is the start of your book perfectly measured, 16 and a half inches, and then we've scored at seven and a half inches, and then nine inches, that gives you your cent. All good for that one. What we can then do now is I'm going to set this one to the side. You're going to dive into your 12 by 12 paper pad, and you're going to decide on what pattern papers you want. might want to mix and match you know you maybe want to use uh, one design for the front and what I should just say is I use one design for the front and I use a different one for the inside right. but what you can do is you can make them all different if you want but I'm going to go for this pattern that I've got so we've got this one here and I'm also going to go in pattern paper I'm going to go in with some of my baby blue and I'm also going to so go in... It's all about baby blue for you today, isn't it? I, I'm <laughs> doing a lot of blues today, am I? Yeah, I yeah. really, really am. Really am. So what we can do now is let's bring in our guillotine. So this bit here, this is going to be our mats and layers for the inside of the book. So what we're going to do, and I'm just going to correct myself, the front and the back, I am using that same pattern all the way through. So what we need cut two of these to seven inches by seven and a half. Okay. So I'm going to elongate that. So we're going to go up to seven inches by seven and a half. So remember, we need to do that too. Don't worry about the offcuts because we're going to be using them just shortly. So once again, seven by seven and a half. So that's these two. And then we need to take the baby blue linen cardstock. And what I'll just say now as well, when we get to this end bit here, we'll take a break. If that's all right, Becky, come back yep. to you. So at least now you know that there's a little break coming up if you need to catch up. Mm -hmm. So we've done our seven by seven and a half. Taking our baby blue, what we need to do is cut this one to seven and a quarter inches by seven and three quarters. That's going to give us our mat and layer. Yeah. And as I say, we need to do that twice. So we're going to do seven and a quarter by seven and three quarters. So that's these ones. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back to a piece of the pattern paper that we've got left over. Don't worry if it's not in a continuous flow design, it's snowflakes, do you know what I mean? You're not gonna see it with your eye. So we need to come along to, I need to take a, one of the longer ones, seven and a half inches. So we're gonna go up to seven and a half, and then we're gonna come in to the one inch. So I'm gonna line that up against our one inch. Mm -hmm. 
and cut. And then what we need to do is come in with our baby blue. You've probably guessed it already. We're going to go a quarter of an inch bigger. So seven and three quarters by one and a quarter. And then we're going to cut. So I'm going to pop these bits to the side for now. And then what we are going to do is we are going to take our little edge crimpler. Now, I know, Becky, you featured these earlier on mm -hmm. today. You know, you might have one. Before these came along, what many would do, and you can still do it, I would just say, please, of course, do be careful. Many people would use their scissors to distress the edge. But of course, nowadays, we have got our tool. So all that I'm going to do is I'm going to go round the edges. And don't worry about creasing the card with your finger. Don't worry if you get a real strong dis distress, whether you were to accidentally rip the edge or tear the edge. Doesn't matter. As you can see, we're going for that distressed effect. So all that I'm going to do is go along and I'm working my way around. So carry on all the way around and you're doing that on the three pattern paper pieces. So, so does it have a little kind of blade inside that sort of circular piece? Is that what it's got in there? So yeah, it's got um, a protective blade mm -hmm. inside. So what they were actually, the tools were initially used for was in, in sewing to uh, cut the thread, yeah. you know, which I know that you know that, Becky. But if, you know, many didn't know, that's what the tools were originally mm -hmm. um, brought out for. But then as paper crafters, we were finding that because it is a really strong blade inside, it works well for distressing your a safer papers than using the scissors. a yeah. lot, lot safer because you know, now of course, little kids are, you know, you're not going to give them to little kids, of course, but if you are overlooking them, watching them, they can safely mm -hmm. have a little bit of a play, distress the edges, they're not going to get their fingers or anything like that caught. It's a nice, safe way to get that distressed effect. So, all that I'm going to do within this one here is go around this last edge again. So, I tend to go around once and then go around a couple of times. And as you can see there, I was not doing it in any specific way, fashion, or trying to be careful. I want to get that distressed effect. And the reason being is, yes, it's a distressed effect, but when we go and mat and layer this onto the baby blue, Becky, this has kind of given us an additional mat and layer because the distressed edges is white. Well, it also gives like a little bit of a, an ombre effect, doesn't Does. it, moving forward? Otherwise, it can be too sharp a um, mark against it. I, I, I hadn't thought about that before, but I can see it totally makes sense. And because you've got touches of white within this collection, mm. the pattern papers, I know the linen cardstock, there's white in it, it's quite yeah. dominant. It's a nice artificial matte and layer, so to speak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you wanted to play around with the measurements and do a white matte and layer with the linen card, of course you can't, that's up to you. But there's a lot going on in this project. And there is, it's not a heavy project by all means, but by taking away that linen card matte and layer, just makes it that little bit lighter. Mm. So coming to the end on that one, and this one I am going to dis uh, distress, I am going to stress, don't worry about if you find this difficult and you do tear this or you know you get a big chunk out of it, do not worry. Just grab it in your hands, hold it as comfortable as you can, mm -hmm. and even just do little fingers unintentionally, but I'm not bothered because it's adding to that effect. So we're going to go along. We're just one. If we crease little bits, that's fine. But we're going to go along up to the edge. And then the best we can, we're just going to go one end and we're going to go to the other end. So if we take that one and I think what we can do is we just need to mat and layer this and pop this in the book, but I'm quite 
So just to reiterate one last time, your pattern paper here, you need two of them that are seven inches by seven and a half, and you're distressed. is seven and a quarter by seven and three quarters and when it comes to your pattern paper strip you need just one that's seven and a half by one inches distress and you need your matting layer seven and three quarters by one and a quarter and that is your measurements and that's going to be for the inner part of your book box okay Fab. So if you are keen on carrying on with that um, craft along, we're going to be back in a couple of moments, but I'll show you a few bits and pieces you might be interested in as well. And um, so we've got a great deal on the ink pads. So first of all, you'll be getting, this is a quick dry ink. This one is Oasis and um, that beautiful blue. So basically everything is blue that's going to work with all those um, Winter Sparkle collection. Then you have this one, which is your ocean blue. Um, again, this is your quick dry um, ink here that you've got. Um, then we've got our water reactive um, ink pads here. <laughs> it's about baby blue. You've got Misty Morning, which is this beautiful kind of um, stony kind of grey colour. Then you've got Twilight Grey. And you've got Spa Blue here. So all those colours are going to work beautifully with this collection. The price today is £17.97, $26.85. It's actually a 50% saving you've got on this, so it's definitely worthwhile um, putting that in your basket. Um, we're going to go back to Craig in a minute. You're, you're ready to have a look at, um, do you carry on? I am, yeah. Becky, if you are. Fabulous. Let's do it. So nothing changes here me and my double-sided tape. If you want to use your tape runner, that's up to you, or if you want to use your uh, tacky glue, that, that's up to you as well. So what I'm going to do is, it doesn't really matter, but I have turned it around on itself. And what we're going to do on our three distressed panels, we're going to go around with our adhesive of choice. So there's one. We're then going to go in with our second one. So we're going to go around. And the designs on each side are slightly different. They complement each other, but they are slightly different. So there's our second one. And then we're going to go in with our third one, which is going to go down the central of the spine. Mm -hmm. And so that it doesn't get too repetitive. What I've kind of done is, because we do need to do this again for the outside, yep. but I've kind of broken it up so that, you know, it's not going straight into right. the second lot. So what we can then do is we're going to take our adhesives off. I'm going to go in with this. So this one, where we were talking about earlier on, Becky, about adhesives, tacky mm -hmm. and all purpose. Mm -hmm. Because this is a non-coated cardstock, whether it's the linen card, the pattern paper, this is one where potentially you could use your all-purpose glue. Yep. Use your tacky as well, but you can use your all-purpose glue. Because there's no coating on it, yeah. it means that they're all-purpose to take away the front, yep. that front coating. So if you ever wonder about the glues, you could use your all-purpose new crafters because there's just so many different when they're doing things so there's not a hard and fast rule nope. for matte and layers um, and it, is, it can be quite confusing when you first get started or even if not if you've got you know, you've just been using it's a um, product on the market for you yeah so it's really useful to see what everybody uses exactly I would always say if you are starting out now I know Predominantly, most that are watching or taking part in the craft along are someone that has a baby. Starting out, when it comes to adhesives, I would say tape runner, tacky glue, mm -hmm. and glue gel and foam pads. Right. That's because I think a tape runner is beneficial mm -hmm. over double-sided tape. So you'll have your double-sided tape runner, and of course, you'll have your tacky. 
gel in your foam pads. Try them out, see what you like, and then you can start to build to things like all-purpose glues, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Nice little starter for you. Yep. But there we go. here so this is going to go on the inside of the book so now that we've done them all we can absolutely attach these to the inside of our book so once again with your adhesive of choice I'm going to and if we take the next one and we're doing the same now my tape when when I say my tape my tape that I'm using a finger lift tape. Right. It's the exact same medium. It's double sided tape. It's just underneath and lift it off. So the only difference is what I'm using isn't a finger lift. So, in case you wonder, well, what one is it Craig's using? Because I know there's one on the website that says finger lift tape. It's the same as I'm using, it's just got a bit more of a bigger back in for you to take it off. Um, Evelyn's um, asked to onto cardstock. Was it just a regular cardstock? Um, she couldn't quite hear because there was some issues with um, the connection. So it, it was actually, it was our white linen cardstock that was in the uh, Winter Sparkle collection. Mm -hmm. So usually anything we, we tend to say water-based, we would do onto a I'm sure Evelyn, as you, you, hopefully you heard the bit where I was saying, you can absolutely get away with spritzing or inking onto a linen cardstock, you know, it still works very well. You might find it warps a little bit more than right. watercolour card, but if you... That's the only difference between a watercolour card and a non-watercolour yeah. card. And I suppose if it's a linen cardstock, you're probably not going to notice that so much because not. you've got that texture there anyway. Exactly. You're right. Absolutely. Questions? Um, any ideas? You know, maybe you're, you're not too sure about um, a particular product that we've got. Please just um, message in and we will do our best to answer you. So I'm feeding that one in. So that's the inside of Lovely. our book. And you'll probably notice there's not a continuous even flow what I've done is I popped them whichever way that they've come when I've cut them but that's like you said that's what you've got like a swirling mist of yes. snowflakes that's what it's going to look like it is indeed it is indeed so now that we have done that one and as I said at the start you know to start with it is a repetitive step where we do it twice, mm -hmm. but then that is the whole point of the craft alongs. So now that we've done that, we've given ourselves a little bit of a break by doing mats and layers. So all that I'm going to do, I'm going to set that to the side, Becky, and I am going to do exactly the same. So this is actually a really good opportunity. If maybe you missed my first steps, mm. I'm just going to be doing them exactly yep, the same. Perfect. So all that we're going to do is once again, two pattern papers, so you will use, not in total, but you will use four sheets of your pattern paper. Mm -hmm. And as it is, you get four sheets of each design. Right. So it's perfect. If you want that uh, continuous flow of design, perfect. So we're going to go two of the pattern paper, which once again is seven, seven and a half. So we're going to cut that one. We're going to do the other one that's also seven inches by seven and a half. So into there. So I'm going to set them to the side for a moment because that's what we're going to distress again. And we're going to take, in actual fact, let me take, we've got one of the, I think this is the one that I used, wasn't it? No, it's not. So let's just cut another one. We're going to cut our pattern strip to seven and a half inch, which is there. So cut. So we can pop all of these ones to the side for now. And we're going to take a little bit more baby blue. 
the off cuts that we are building up when it comes to this cardstock, don't worry because we're going to be using elements on them on the front of them. So Excellent. please don't think you're going to be left with loads and loads of different shape pieces. We have tried to measure it and build it so that we are using these uh, parts that are remaining. Great. So then what we're going to do is we're actually, for this one, which is going to be the outside, we're going to skip and we're going to go in with one of the blues. So for the front, I'm going in with this lighter blue. If you want to go in with the darker one, you can do. Or if you want to stick with the baby blue, mm -hmm. you can do. I, I wanted the front and the back to be slightly different. Yeah. Hence why I've gone in with your slightly deeper blue. Measurements don't change though. So the navy blue now is seven and a quarter by seven and three quarters. So we do that one twice. So seven and a quarter by seven and three quarters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our strips here and this is going to be cut at seven and three quarters by one and a quarter. So that, for our mats and layers for the front and back, that's these ones done. Okay. We will need our guillotine, but I'm going to pop it to the side. And then we are going to take our little tool, which is here. And we're going to do exactly the same as to what we've done on the inside. All we're going to do, Becky, is go round the edges as much or as little, or maybe just not at all. That's yeah. your decision. I like the edge. idea of doing a bit of a distressed um, paper because it's quite nice to have that white showing through. Particularly it is. if you've got a really dark colour on the front. Now, does it work with mirror card and um, with glitter card? Or do you find it does, it, does it peel off with glitter card? So you will sometimes find, certainly with a, and, and that is actually, that's a, a really good question. Thanks for asking that one, Becky, because cause it's a coated one. Mm -hmm. You will find, if you try to do that, because it's a flexible coating, sometimes you find that the coating will actually peel off. Right. So the best time or the best card stock to do this technique is on something like a matte cardstock yep. or a patterned paper. You're not going to get that encapsulated glitter card mm. because your plastic coating is stopping it from yep. distressing. So working our way around, nothing different, gripping it however comfortable you feel. If it creases, it folds, absolutely fine. So we're going to go in and if you were to do this craft along again at your uh, own convenience or you are watching and you're going to do it down the line this is where what you could do Becky is you could go around with some of your inks yep. you could go around with your uh, translucent clear ink pad and pop embossing powders around them and heat them gilding flakes gilding flakes Ooh. yeah absolutely I always love a little bit of gilding flakes and what I would do, and I'll just explain this while I'm going around the edges here, is your little tool set that hopefully you got with the gilded flakes mm -hmm. that stays sticky glue. Yeah. Either one of our blending foam pads or even just with your finger. What I would do, a little bit of my glass mat, dab my finger in or the sponge and then just dab it along the edge. Then pop your gilded flakes over the top and then burnish them off. That's how I would do it. Yeah. It's, uh, Another one that's up to yourself. So we can go around the edges. And then talking about gilding flakes, what you could also do, if you've managed to get a hold of our uh, new packs of Stay Sticky pens, you could go in, you could draw little designs or yeah. little snowflakes yourself on your pattern paper and pop in maybe one of the lighter shades or the silver gilding flakes. Yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah. 
Right. Lynn Harvey has just messaged. I'm just popping in quickly to say hi to everyone. I'm watching from my mum's hospital room where she is. My brother and I have been staying at the hospital with my mum, being here since Tuesday morning. Hello, Lynn, and no, send, sending you our love to your mum. Absolutely. You know, hope, hopefully she'll, she'll be all right. Um, it's always nice to hear from you. I do hope you're all having a, a good day, but if you do have any questions, please do message in and let us know. Absolutely, yeah, because there's parts in the craft along, certainly with this one, where I'm doing what yeah. I'm doing here. So this is where it's always lovely to hear from you, whether you're taking part or not. Or as you said, Becky, fire your questions through to Becky, and if we can help wherever we can, we will do. So last remaining bit here, so we're going to go in, distress, distress, and I say that loosely. I am um, just pull effect, and then what we can do with my double sided tape, and we're going to do our map on the front of our book. So there we go. I don't know why I'm turning them round, Becky, because it's the exact same effect. I know the pattern's slightly different. You turn them. It's, uh, it's kind of like a habit when I... ...right side. So you pop your adhesives on the back side. So let's work our way round. or you didn't uh, hear myself say the full step-by-step -step instructions for this craft along. It will be posted. Uh, uh, yeah, on my Facebook. Monday Makers as well, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. So, well, give me a written, they're all safe. Gilmore did message in and said thank you very much for that. Absolutely, it does make it. And then it means that you've always got them, um, you know, always got them, so you might be. Yeah. Do you know, I was thinking, because of all the colours, if you had a, a, a child, a grandchild that was going to go to see France, put those frozen tickets in the inside in that oh. little pocket. You're going to have at the theatre. What a great idea! Yeah. What a lovely idea that is. Absolutely. You could do that for a gift for any kind of um, you could. show, couldn't you? But for a small child, um, you know, frozen obsessed like most children are, that is a perfect gift. Can you know if. Like that, do you know what I mean? Or yep. when you're saying about you know frozen of the blue linen card. Now I know none of this is card stock, mm. or you know maybe a bit of lilac or something. This is going to go lovely with mm. the pink you've seen. comes to frozen how well the pinks and the blues do go together yeah, absolutely. theater show felt like you because often with those kind of gifts it's quite difficult with a, a gift voucher for, for theater or tickets or something and being able to make a box like this and hand it over I mean it, it's going to be a keepsake it's going to be a place where they would perhaps that kind of thing that's because right you never want to get rid of this once you've made it no no you're not wanting to to do that the, the tickets and maybe the little sweeties or something mm -hmm. that they're going to have it's going to work an absolute treat mm. no. um right so we've done the inside and what we'll do is we'll just finish this outside and we'll take a little bit of a break um and then go over this bit is because what I need you to do from the Winter Sparkle main collection 
of the fancy ribbons that you've got. I'm going in with that, it's got like a white textured fabric that's got bits of pink in it, so it would go really... It does give you a slight change of colour when you look at it, but it is quite a, a soft pink. So, what we need to do... I take my backing off first, and then ready to go. So I'm going to pop that one to the side, and I'm going to pop this one to take all of these off. I extra strength in mm -hmm. the center. So. We don't need the full lot for this bit, the halfway point, but I go along to 12, so I cut at 13 inches and I do that twice, and then I do it this way so that I have a full additional I always like these to be really, really, really strong and sturdy. So I'm going to go in with my red liner tape. So what I'm going to do is just roughly go in and with which is four inches. Center point. So what I'm going to do, Becky, is I'm going to go along and right to this very edge, because if you're familiar, I've just not pressed down, because I like to have that border all the way around. So, so a couple of millimetres to the inner, and I'm going to do two. So we're going to do that one. And now I'm popping down longer lengths than I absolutely need, but it doesn't matter because it's still going to hold. We've got that one now. Take these ones off. Peel these ones. And although this is going to be sandwiched really, really strongly with our adhesive, I'm going to come along with one length here. And I'm going to maybe about an inch I'm going to do the same on this side. Mm -hmm. If you only do a little bit, there's a lot more of a chance. So at least if you give it about a good inch, like so, and then tiny little bit of glue gel. Okay. So that is going to dry unbelievably. On the top, it is quite literally a tiny little bit, Becky. So what that also does is your red liner tape. You can use double-sided tape if you want because we've added that glue gel. But your double-sided tape... I uh, ...rock solid. So you know that it doesn't matter how much you manhandle it, it's going to stay. press that in and now we've got a hidden ribbon where we can then put my finger in but it doesn't matter I can just spread that off I'm going to press that one on press 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 I'm not going to cut these at an angle just yet we can do that at the end and it's our outside we've hidden the ribbon legs so you're not seeing them and that double sided tape red liner tape gives you that instant stick but the glue gel is going to give you that absolute permanent strong bond
Fantastic. That looks really great. I'm just totally in love with this. I wish I could craft at the same time. So I hope you're all enjoying crafting along. We're going to go for a little bit of a break. Give this an opportunity. Welcome to Club Inspire. obsession join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20 percent of your first order we'll also give you 250 points to help get you started other benefits of joining club inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for club inspire members only exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches and of course the club inspire community group on facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. What makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're they're um, really skilled at what they do, and they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crafters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the product. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. Community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. 100% it's the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, oh, the people obviously, the people not just here at Crafts Companion, uh, but the viewers that watch us, I mean everybody. We have this real magical essence about it. Bye for now. Bye. Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you've managed to catch up. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the craft along. I'm so excited, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all comes back um, together. So this is um, the craft along we're doing with the Winter Sparkle Collection. This is, um, if you've missed out on the original um, collection, these are um, elements we still have available. Um, if you look at the website, you will find individual items um, are available as well. But in here, you're gonna be getting your linen cardstock, your shimmer sprays, your glitter, your sequins, your gilded flakes you're going to be getting that corner and um, snowflake um, die you'll also be getting that large and um, half snowflake die with the stamp set stamping sentiments and also that panel die as well the price for this is 60 pounds or 77 dollars platinum price is 48 pounds or 61 dollars 60 and Craig we're going to continue with this craft along aren't we we are we absolutely are so now what we are wait to do is we're going to come along and we are going to do a little bit of stenciling with the glitter pastes. Now the reason I've also gone with our um, sort of distressed look is I didn't want anyone to think when they got this collection and a craft along it's going to be really daunting to get it right, to get it even. So I've gone along with that distressed look so that if you miss bits, if you cut bits, if you rip bits, it doesn't matter. And the same goes for this bit. Stenciling can be quite daunting. It's fun and it is quite easy but it can be a bit daunting as if what happens if the glitter glue gets underneath or a, a smear it or something? If you do, 
adds to the effect. Okay. If it doesn't, great, but if it does, doesn't matter. So what we're going to do, what I'm also going to say as well, is just keep a note of what is your inside and your outside. So this is my inside, I have gone baby blue, but because your ribbon is different on each side there. So this is my uh, inside of course, that's my outside that we've got here. And the reason I'm doing this bit now, while I've mat and layered it all together, is because if I popped my glitter paste onto here before I've mat and layered it, it's going to make it even more difficult to mat and layer because you're working with a wet you know, yep. surface. So it means as well, if you go over the edge, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm doing is I'm going to take my snowflake, just a part of the stencil snowflake, and I'm going to go in with the glitter paste. Hasn't been opened yet. Oh, look at that one. Wow. Ooh, love it. <laughs> love, love, love it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is usually when I'm working with glitter pastes and stencils, I will adhere it with low tack tape or stencil tape or anything like that. Because I'm going quite free fall, all that I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it with my fingers and then I'm going to go in. I do have a little um, kind of like um, spatula, oh, what do you call it again? Uh, yeah, palette knife. Little palette knife, that's it. Angled palette knife. If you don't... I thought it was for cooking. For, I yeah. do cake baking, so, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, so, yeah, this was or is actually one designed for um, crafting, but if you don't have one, yeah. if you've got something spare like that, you can use that. Uh, if you've got a ruler or a smaller ruler, you can yeah. use that. Um, use the back of your uh, scoring tool, you can use that. If you've got a flexible friend that you're not using, bank card, yeah, something like idea. that, store card, you can use that. And all that I've done is I've gone in, can we oh, see yes, how it glistens see slightly? Yeah. So that is one corner. We're going to do the same here. Now, because of the craft along, and we don't have the luxury of time to let things dry, the only thing I would say now is at this stage, going forward, just be careful that, you know, we don't put our hand or that in it and smear it completely. How long does it take to dry? So I would say touch dry, maybe round about an hour or so. Okay. But even then, if you really were to press it, you're going to push all that glitter paste yeah. off. So to give it or send it, at least, as we say with many things, uh, give it overnight, 24 okay. hours. Can you use um, a hairdryer or something like that on it to Can speed do. it up if you want to? Yeah, yeah. if you want to. Uh, beware, though, because it's glue. If you do that, do it quite far back yep. and do it not necessarily on a low heat but just do it at a bit of a distance because it's glue inside so it will bubble sometimes that can look well that can look really nice a, a bubbled effect mm -hmm. you just need to watch for it, the dangers of that you know if it was to, to yep. catch like and I don't want to scare anyone or anything like that it's never happened to me what have you but it's just for you to be aware it is glue so yes you can uh, heat set it but just do it at a bit of a distance okay. if you see it bubbling stop and then cool and start again. But that is all that I'm going to do, the two corners there. What that's going to do is add an additional bit of texture mm -hmm. to the front. And then all that I am going to do, just for the second, so that it doesn't dry completely, I've got a couple of wet wipes. So if Can. If you're taking part in the craft along, just put a wet kitchen towel or cloth or something damp over it, mm -hmm. just so that you can uh, dry it later. Okay. So now that's us done that one. What we then need to do is the additional front part of the craft along box. So we're going to go in with some of the baby blue that we've got left over. So I can take this bit and I will need to take a new sheet. And I'm moving that out the side. And now all that I need which I don't have within my stash, is the 3D folder. So we'll, we'll need to get a hold of the 3D folder. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to refer to my notes just to see if we can nip over into the next bit. Tell you what, what we can do is let's go into 
our snowflakes. So we actually used this one earlier on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our snowflake, I'm going to move that to the side, and we're going to take some of this light blue that we've got left over. Right. We're going to cut two of them. One through. This one, same plate configuration as usual. So we're going to run that one through. So what I'll do, I've got the folder now, thanks to, to Jake. So I will cut two of them, because I don't want to mix up the craft along. So I'll cut these two, and then we'll go back onto the steps that I've written out for you. So It's let's... almost a royal blue. That it blue. is, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. It really is. So we can then go in and pop this bit out here. We can then go in and we can take this bit. If you want to tape it, you can. I'm just going to lift that, line my plates. This is what I was meaning as well, Becky, when all of us, when we do craft-alongs, we, we don't just come up with an idea of a craft-along. We're looking at what we're using and how we can save on yeah. what we're using. You know, we know what the world's like at the moment when it comes to uh, the cost of stuff. So we're not throwing a craft along to hard stock that we are using. Mm. Something like that, you know, I can still use these little bits. And be like a half snowflake aperture. Yeah. You know, you could put acetate to the back and that could be a shaker. Stencil over the top, spritz over the top. See how you can use components. So what we can then do is let's pop these bits out. So I've got my two snowflakes done. So what we can do, I'm going to move them. So I'm conscious that I want to keep these true to the steps I've written out for you. So yeah. you might want to watch and craft at the same time. So we've got our folder. Now, of course, it's not big enough for you to do a full front panel. So this is when sentiments dies. These act as a hidden panel for certain elements. Yeah. So what we can then do is we're going to come along with our baby blue. So I need to cut two of these that are four inches by six inches. So we're going to go at what, six inches by four inches. And I need another one. So we're going to go four inches by six inches. So what we're going to do now is taking that 3D embossing folder, we're going to run this one through. And it's not as if there's a right and a wrong side to the linen card. Both sides are lovely, but one side does have a more linen texture to yeah. it. So all that I'm doing is I'm making sure that my linen side is facing upright. And this is my uh, 3D snowflake layer on this side here. So that means the detail is going to be pushed upwards. So we're going to go in and we're going to run this one through. So it's 3D, so base cut and plate, magnetic and plastic shim. So that one we're going to run through and bringing in that whole distressed effect this is what we're going to be using our sand and block or our sandpaper on so we can distress it. So we are pulling in the distressed edges into the embossing design. Wow. Those 3D embossing folders, it's such a, a really deep embossing, isn't it? It is. It's, it's it's um, about the paste, the glitter paste, could you do the paste before it? Does it, does it not shrink the cardstock at all? Uh, no, so you will find because... So you will find kind of what we were talking about earlier on, it might start to buckle slightly, mm -hmm. but because you're going to be using your adhesives, it's going to flatten it out, not a problem. Um, yes, usually I would do the pasting beforehand and let it dry, but I'm trying to think where we can still do the project with that is to assemble it, then do the paste.
down the line tomorrow, next week, whenever. If you can, do your stenciling first. Let Peg. You are more than welcome. So what we're going to do now is... tape you can use sticky tape stencil tape low tack tape doesn't really matter at the moment it's about holding these panels together so now I've got an elongated panel mm -hmm. that we can see and now for this one what I need to do is cut it to five and three quarters so let's go along now So that's actually six down a straight quarter of an inch. What I'm kind of doing is taking a little bit from one side. That, absolutely. It's, it's just kind of what I... What I would say, it's not a... this side or this length because you do actually want that center line to be hidden so you do want it to be center yep. so again it is uh, eight inches so this is how I think it needs to be five and three quarters so I'm going to cut an inch so I'm going to come down to seven inches turn it around I'm going to come down to six inches and then I'm going to do the same I'm going to do half that side half that side so I'm now five and three quarters by five and three quarters with my central line down the center yeah so see that perfect that's how that uh, I like to do that so all that we need to do at this bit is I'm going to tell I've just got this is like a soft sanding block mm -hmm. sandpaper if you've got and I'm laying this bit flat and all that I'm going to do and this works well with a 2D folder but it works so well with a 3D folder because you've got different depths it's sanding off that blue colour on different levels so that's just ordinary sandpaper block that you've got there so it's a fine so this is a fine, fine one, one yeah yep. so if you're using sandpaper yeah uh, fine sandpaper is absolutely fine it doesn't have to be too coarse the closer it is, the more chance it's going to just rip your card. Could you, I suppose you could use a nail buffer if you didn't have... I don't see why not. Like ...to do is take off a slight layer. It looks so effective once you've done that. It does, doesn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it works really... Well, oh, we're thank spending you. so much more money. And uh, my house could <laughs> be even more full with crafty goodies than it is currently. <laughs> Yes, I, I enjoy doing all the craft alongs, but I have to say, this one and the one I've got in a couple of weeks coming as well, I just had an absolute blast <laughs> uh, by creating them. So there we go. So I embossed two bits of baby blue cardstock that were four by six, embossed them each, attached them together, and then I've trimmed them all the way around to five and three quarters by five and three quarters and sanded it back. So I think in a... In a Let's take a little break and then we can come back. Do you remember, um, we, if, you're, if you're looking for um, all sorts of things about Winter Sparkle, um, these are the ribbons. But there are lots of things that are available on the website as individual items. So do have a look as well as that bundle that we've got. Pads. So these ink pads are going to work perfectly with all of the colours in this collection. So the first one is your ocean blue. This is your um, quick dry ink pad. Then you've got your oasis. Misty morning. Then we have spa blue. We have twilight grey, and then we have baby blue down here. So the price for these is £17.97, $26.85. This is actually a 50% discount um, on these, so definitely worth doing those as well. Um, we've also got 
show you quickly before they go. We have got a handful of these left. So these are your 12 by 12 paper pads, 32 double-sided sheets, £14.99 or $19.95. You've got um, really, really beautiful um, cards, here, papers here. You'll see them um, the, in, throughout the whole of this craft along, but they are absolutely beautiful. All those really dark, vivid blues, um, the paler kind of colours as well. Um, they are absolutely stunning. They look like, you know, you're looking at, out on Christmas Eve into the frosty um, snow, um, it's really lovely. Um, so this is definitely worth popping into your basket if you are keen to get um, some more paper pads. We haven't got very many of these, so do check out on those very quickly. But the main item that we've got on, the, on today is a Winter Sparkle collection um, where we've got some linen cardstock, we've got dyes, we've got um, shimmer sprays, we've got glitter, we've got gilding flakes, we've got stamps as well. And um, you also are able to down the eight by eight paper pad uh, sorry download the eight by eight, pa pa uh, blah, 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 blah. eight by eight paper pad download and so you can download that as many times as you like and that is included in that bundle and that'll be something you'll be able to download again and again print again and again um, and really is going to make it um you know that give you long longevity with this particular collection for platinum price is £48, $61.60. And we're going to continue with the craft I along, aren't we? I think so. I think so. So let's continue. So we're still focusing on our embossed layer. We have cut this to five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So we're going to take another piece of that lighter blue. So this one is going to be cut to six by six. And then to break that one up, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of the white linen card and we're going to cut that one to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So that will then, in a moment, mat and layer onto there. And this is where this is going to break up the towel. up. But just briefly, I'm going to go so onto the front. I'm not going to put it straight on at the moment because it's wet. But you see how it just disappears? Whereas if we pop that mat and layer, oh, yes. it lifts it. Yeah. It just lifts it up, brings it to the front, and that's what we're after. So then what we're going to do is we're going to think now of our sentiment that we're going to go on. And we touched upon this in Wake Up Call, funny enough. What I need is I need a, um, a sentiment strip, strip to actually stamp onto. So it needs to be five and three quarters by three quarters of an inch. It's a really thin strip. Okay. So what we can even either do is where the notches end on the guillotine, that is uh, three quarters of an inch, or an easier way to do it, and I can do it because we've got larger cardstock. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that just for ease, so it's actually at five inches. So that just means I'm going to go a quarter of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to cut. So there's an easy way to get your three quarters of an inch. Right. And then I'm going to turn this one around and we're going to cut it at five and three quarters. Hide your join and that's where the sentiment's going to go. So now that we've got that one, I'm going to set that one to the side and that one has been done. What we then need to do is we do need to do roughly the same, making sure I've got enough, which I do. Another bit of blue. Mm -hmm. We're going to come along and I'm not doing a matte and layer. Still cutting it at five and three quarters, but this time we're going to come up to one inch. So I'm coming up to the one inch mark. That gives me my mat and layer, top and bottom, but it comes flush at each side. Yep. So once again, for visual reference, if I bring that one in, it goes right to the edge and it just pulls it all together. So that can now go to the side. So what we're going to do is move these bits out of the way. On the list I gave you, I popped down midnight, quick dry. So I've got mine here and I'm going to go back to my little strip that I have stamped, uh, cut out and we're going to come in with our mat. 
If you find it easier using your larger stamping platforms, you can do. But what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to go in with Happy Christmas. So I'm going to, and I'm going to put a little bit of white underneath just to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm going to go along. And I'm going to line that up on one of the, the lines on the platform, whichever one. But by lining them up, it means I'm going to get them or get the sentiment straight. So get that one. Move that one out the way now. And all I'm going to do with the Midnight Quick Dry, I'm going to give that a really, really good coat in. And then I'm going to go in and visually I'm going to get that central as I can. If you want to put a little pencil mark, you can do. But I'm going to go in, I'm going to press and remove and we've got Happy Christmas. Lovely. In the midnight. So keeping in with that blue tones. So that's that one. So well then what I'm going to do is move that one out of the way. And then what we can then do is then we can come along. And now what I need to do is I'm just going to refer to my notes here. Uh, so I've gone and I've, died, I've stamped my sentiment. And then we're going to come along. So let's take our mat and layer. Double-sided tape, your choice of adhesive. We're going to add that one on. So if I take this one, taking that one over the top, and what I'm going to do, Becky, is mat and layer. If you have difficulty matting and layering smaller layers, uh, wet glue, tacky glue, is going to right. be a good one for you. So we can set that one to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add our adhesive and we're going to mat and layer these ones together. So I had a question from Crafty Angie. Um, she said, when you uh, sanded the paper, how much, how much of the definition did you lose from the embossing? Uh, very little because cause you've got a lot of depth mm. when it comes to the 3D. So all that I was really doing was taking off that top layer of the highest point of the emboss mm -hmm. and it discolours it basically, yeah. pulls it right back to white but you don't lose anything, we've still got a lot of texture, I know obviously you can only go on by my word but you've still got the texture, you can see that from the image, so the higher ones is uh, distressed quite heavily, some of your lighter ones a little bit lighter can see here but you don't lose anything still a lot of structure and texture to thank it thank you for that we can go round so once we've added these ones we're going to come along just making sure I get onto the right side the other reason as well that I chose to still stick with my double-sided tape in this craft along is sneakily, it also gives you at home that little bit extra time maybe to catch up, because I know many of you will use a tape runner mm -hmm. or a wet glue. So by me, it gives you that little bit of uh, wiggle time to catch up if you need it. So I use it anyway, but I thought usually in craft alongs, I'll sometimes use a tape runner. So, what we can do with this one now is then once I've matte and layered this Becky this is where we would then cut our two snowflakes yeah which I've already done and well we'll all have done it let's pop that one on so all of these can come what I'll say is um, where we die cut the snowflakes next, I'm not step by step instructions. I'll keep them the way that I was intending. Oh, yeah, Craig's already cut the snowflakes in the craft along because he was just waiting on the folder. So then it's going to go onto a foam. But we do them as well in sections. So 
section by section, the back, the sentiment, and then we're committing Eight. Five or a six by six Absolutely embossing folder, and it could be like yeah. an eight by eight one. But hiding the joins, so I'll do because we'll have all cut these by now. I'm going to go in with my snowflake. I'm going to go in my tacky glue. So what we can then do is I'm going to add my tacky glue. I've done with this mm -hmm. and then I've added my glue kind of up the spine and that's it because I want these mm -hmm. so I'm going to come in and because I'm on foam that base line that to as much of the center as I can Press that one in, press that one in. So we'll have these edges that are lifted, not high, but they're free flowing, which I want. And then we're going to do exactly the same with this one. So we're going along the spine, along the spine, along the spine. Going to tuck under. So if we go in, so move that along. So getting that as central as I can. We're then going to press. So once you press that in, going to press, press, press. Pop it onto the front of my box just yet. But that, to this point now, We've done the outside, sorry, the inside, yeah. the, what is the outside, and then that will go onto there. Yeah. But when we come back, if you want to have another little break, we're then going to come in and then we're going to do the box and the inside, and then we'll just bring it all together. Fantastic. That's really, really lovely. So this is our Winter Sparkle collection. So this is um, this is what we've got left from that really big launch we had. Um, so we've got this in the collection, but they are, there are other things available independently um, or individually on the um, website. So you're going to be getting your linen cardstock, you've got dyes, you've got panel dye, you've got that lovely snowflake dye, you've got a snowflake corner, um, you've got gilding uh, flakes, you've got sequins, you've got glitter, you've got shimmer spray, and also you've got your um, stamped sentiments. Um, you'll also be able to get your downloadable 8x8 paper pad. Um, so you can download that as well as, as, as often as you like, really, um, forever. And so that is £60 or $77. Your platinum price is £48 or $61.60. But do look at the website and have a look for any of the other items that Craig's been using on today's show because you may find them available as individuals as well. Um, you will also be able to use paper pads as well. We haven't got very many of those, a 12 by 12 paper pad. So do make sure that you check out those really, really quickly. Um, we've got uh, lots of people messaging in saying how lovely it is because it is absolutely lovely. Um, Lynn says that embossing looks absolutely beautiful and very effective the way that you've made that small panel, that mm -hmm. small embossing panel into something much bigger, much more usable if you want to do a larger item. I think that's a really good idea being able to put that sentiment in that's the middle. It. Yeah. That's hiding it. And the thing is, Becky, it could be if you've got any of your peel off strips, it could be something like that. It could be if you go in with a black line, you know, your, your um, um, dotting your dash lines mm -hmm. or something like that. It's just kind of deceiving people with ways of hiding the join lines mm -hmm. and it's just getting extra use out of your products. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, really great. I like that a lot. And then we're going to carry on with the, um, the crafting. I believe so. So what we are going to do before we just continue with the inside so that I can go uh, to my notes so you've got a uh, full flow when it comes to going through them all. I am popping this one onto the front of our uh, box to start with, or our book. I know at this stage, these parts are still going to be wet. If you are doing them at my pace, don't worry about it. It's still actually going to work. And in actual fact, because we're going to add this on with foam pads, 
where it crosses over, because it's glue, it's actually going to dry into it. So it's going to make it sturdy. So, you know, if you want to wait and do this bit, I've put tape already on the back. I don't need tape, I need foam pads. So I'm going to go in with our foam pads and I'm going to make sure I've got a nice sturdy back for it. So I'm, I always go corners and then I go in the centre. So let's go in and I'm going to put a few extra ones into each bit. So we're going to go in here, press these ones in. And although a moment ago I put my tape onto the back of the white layer, of course, if you want it flat, go for it. But I'm not overly concerned because no one's going to see it. Mm -hmm. No one's going to see the back. So it does not matter. So coming in now, so this is now the front of our book. This is where we've got our stencil paste. So we're going to go in. I'm going to get that central as I can. And you're still getting that glitter paste out to the side. And where your foam pad now underneath is sitting onto that glue, that glitter glue is going to dry into your foam pads and it's going to make it even stronger. So in some ways, it's a bit of a win-win. Yeah. So here we go. That is now our front. So now I can set that to the side. What we can then do is we can go into the box now. If you are doing what I've done and we're going to go in with a wax melt box, then great. But I'm going to use our white linen for the base. Now I've gone over, well, uh, Becky was chatting, I gave my glass mat a little bit of a wipe from all of So for the base of our box, I am going to go in with the white, and you've guessed it, I'm going to go in with the lid, and that's the baby blue. <laughs> I, lo I love blues as it is, you know, I really, really, really do. Um, well, actually, Lynn Cherryman says, love this collection. Blue is my favourite colour. It's, ah, my, it's my mum's favourite colour. My, basically, my mum's house is like walking into some Wedgwood china. It's all white and blue. Yeah? Yeah. 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 It doesn't do any other colour apart from blue. No? No. no that's uh, it. Yeah, we'll have that effect, eh? The, the blue. So we're going to go in for the wax melt box base, if that's what you're going to be using it for. So we're going in with our white. So we are going to go for, I'm just going to turn it that way to remind myself. So the way that I've measured it, so we've got little waist. We're going to go eight inches by eight and a quarter, which is what A4 is. So we're good. And then for the lid, we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to go eight inches by eight and a quarter which is what A4 is, yep. which is good. See, I didn't just throw this craft no, along together. I, took, I did really take. Can I ask a personal question? Of course you can. How long did it take you to create this craft along? How long, so how much, how much time are we, you saving, the viewers at home, having to work out how everything is done? How, do you do the morning one go, or do you sort of you know, plan, come back to it and keep going? How do you do it? So with craft along for me so what I do is I think about it I plan it out I do sometimes sketch bits out um, if there's measurements needed I'm going to go right I'm going to do it so it's going to fit four Yankee candles other mm -hmm. wax melts available um, measure them measure the box size that I need jot it all down so right from the very start of initially thinking now keeping in mind I've stopped for lunch tea hospital yeah. appointments etc etc three and a half days really three and wow. a half days Yep. I'm well, not surprised because start. there's loads of different elements here. There are lots of different measurements. Yeah. Um, and, and then you make, you're make you making the mistakes, aren't you? So Absolutely. You, know, you don't have to at home. <laughs> well, the box lid, I'd done three times because I wasn't happy with the way that it looked, how I designed it. Mm -hmm. Something just wasn't right about it. So I'd done it again, still wasn't right. So even things like that, yeah. do you know what I mean? We'll come up with the measurement. Something just doesn't look right. You know, and all of us here, and it, you know, you say we're such a perfectionist, and if it doesn't look right, we're like, no, I'm not using it. Yeah. I'm not using it. So, yeah, in, in total, I think it was just shy of three and a half days. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's impressive. 
So we've got our card stocks, so and we're going to go back to our score master for this one. So what I'm going to go and do, so the lid is the baby blue. So I'm going to go in, so our linen uh, texture is facing upwards. So we're going to go onto the uh, box lid side. So what we're going to and a quarter inches. So scoring at one and a quarter. So we're going to go round and score lightly and a few times. So one and a quarter. And this is the stage, Becky, an another day if you're doing this, if you wanted to change the measurements of the box for mm -hmm. uh, the measurement wise. For the box base, I need to do the same. I pop it onto the box base side and I'm scoring at one and a quarter. I, I find it near impossible to score upwards. Mm -hmm. So I always turn my scoreboard. You'll see there is the one and a quarter. So we're going to turn that around. I'm not doing it with a score master. I'll do it with any scoreboard where I need to score a box base. Okay. So we're going to go in and we are scoring. So that one is ready to go. And what we're going to do, and I've written the base, we're not assembling the lid just yet. Okay. Because we're going to create a frame for the center. So what we're then going to do is when it comes to a box, we're cutting up to our score line and a little uh, V or a little notch and we're going to work our way all the way around. Now a cardstock such as this linen cardstock, any other necessarily use this as my base, Becky. However, because this is actually going to be to it. So um, I'm more than happy to be using this one. So I'm going to go in and so I'm going to do all four to the fourth one. It's given that first one to start tacky. Hold, and then we can then hold. So we've got one more into the side here, and that is our box base to the side. This one, I am going to fold and do the notches, but as I say, I'm not going to assemble it okay. just yet. So we're going to go in, so we're going to cut and we're going to do that on all four there's my score line it's there and we're going to go good. so all that I need to do now so I'm going to go around and I'm going to follow my instructions so I've got everything all good to go I'm now going to bring in my matte and layer dies here is we're going to take another piece of the navy blue. Let's see if I've got what I've got. So I need two dies here. So I need the f so I need the four inch die and I need the four and a half inch die, which is these frame. So if I come in, we're going to Pop them together. I'm going to add. So we're going to take this one. I'm going to central so that, and when I say central, I don't. 
because this is actually going to be my waist. But if yeah. So it's, it's about where you position your dies as well. And these actually really do mean your mat and layer dies because they're the ones that you, you designed, you created. Yeah. 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 No, a year and a half ago, two years ago. So, so we could do simple as well, but these ones here being the, the six by six. Just to say as well, my plates are back. Mm -hmm. These are basic shapes. So if you hear cracking noises in your die cutting machine, it's normal. Absolutely fine. It's that straight edge die line going into the plastic. It's normal, it's fine, nothing's broken, so don't panic. Just thought I better I better yeah. just say that. I think when you first when you first get your Gemini or, for, or any, use any kind of die cutting machine, and you hear that noise. You it is quite frightening. First of all, you do think you've done something wrong, but actually it's really normal. And it certain is. things make different noises. I cut a lot of felt with my Gemini, and that makes a horrendous noise. Yeah. It sounds like electricity. It's that kind of crackling noise. And um, if you didn't know about it, you wouldn't know that it was not something to be worried about. So, like you say, no. don't worry. Yeah, do not worry whatsoever. Just to Trim that around, I've now got a frame that I could be using elsewhere. Old uh, photos that you used yeah. to get, your Polaroid. <laughs> I have not assembled the lid just yet, because what I'm going to do with my tacky glue, I'm going to go around the edge of my frame, and this I am going to eyeball. If you want to be the box itself, you maybe gather. You know, one is about a, one side's about a quarter of an inch as you can, and then what you could either do four-inch die and die cut it out. Hence why we've not assembled the lid or anything like this, all that I do, Becky, is I'll go in with my craft knife. Okay. And I or so is I'll and then for myself and then I trim So it's optional. The reason I've said at this stage not to assemble the box lid is so that if you choose to use that four inch matte and layer die to create the f aperture in the lid box, you can do that. You would, of course, though, need your large Gemini because that's not going to fit through mm. your ge uh, junior. But we're going to go through we're going to work this one through. But equally, even by hand cutting it, because I've not assembled it, it makes it easier yeah. for me to grip and cut around. So what we can then do is cut that along. There's my aperture within my frame. And then what we can then do is I'm going to take one of the foiled acetate sheets and I'm going to cut this one, Becky, also to four and a half by four and a half inches. Okay. So we're going to come all the way up. Acetate showing on the back. That's also just wasting it. Yeah. So using your guillotine or, of course, using your mat and layer dies because it will cut you. Jim. I'm going to turn that one around and we're going to see that's just going to fit snugly mm. all the way around. We're, we're, I've not done it in my project because, you know, I know we're running out of time. But what you could do is cut another frame and then pop that on the back once you've popped. But all that we're going to do is we're just going to go around and then we can pop our acetate on. Catherine said, um, when did you say the instructions will be? Um I'll do it. I did say it would be after Monday Makers. Yeah. But so later tonight. I 
we, because it's just us, it means we've got a couple of hours in yeah. the next to get them up between craft. It will be after Monday Makers. Okay. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Takeaway. It's not a Saturday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know something? I've, I've heard very little from George over this last <laughs> hour and 35 minutes. And as soon as I say takeaway, I heard him say, what did you get? <laughs> it was a uh, KFC. Very nice. Very nice. Roxanne says, so wonderful. It says, I love the matinee dyes. They are so useful. Definitely are. agree with you on that. So, another piece of the white linen part yep. that we. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to die cut this one twice. So, we're going to go in and we're going to line this one up. It looks lovely without a couple of corners. But do you know what? We've got the dies there. Why not give them that little bit extra Absolutely. detail? One corner in white. So we're going to go into here. And that corner. It does indeed. So if you wanted to add extra. And what's lovely between this die set, which is here, and big bundle you've got a variety of different if you love to layer them up like i done on a project with my and I actually layered the snowflakes up we can then come along and we're going to take Take these bits and do it's just that inner panel to do, but let's get these ones in. Pop these bits out, and something not a lot of people will realize and your tacky glue on acetate. longer to dry because there's no fibers in the acetate for it to dry into but you can absolutely your tacky glue or things such as your double-sided adhesive I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to frame mm -hmm. and I'm going to press So all the way around, sketching. I, I'm sorry. We have got a few more problems, um, a few more gremlins in the system. So do, do you is that have been working all day long um, trying to get everything sorted out. So we do apologise. But um, do remember, Craig will be putting um, all of those instructions on. Um, but do better. And what I will do at Instagram, because I know there's a few, mm -hmm. once I've posted them on my Facebook, the story, okay. and that will take you to the page. You don't have okay. any issues, drop customer service uh, an email, and... Um, we, if, if you don't have social media at all, maybe you're watching. Drop customer service a uh, call or an email, and some way. So assembling this box now, which that one all the way round. 
and then we're going to go in and then So before we carry on to that last inner panel, what I'm going to do is we're going to come in here. Now I'm going to put this flat because I've got a height here that's going to protect yep. my glue. So what we can do is I'm going to take my box base, yep. this white. So this is the white ribbon also that was in that main bundle. I know it is separate. So on the back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tape all the way around. So we're going to work all the way around. It's a nice way to have the box base kept in place. Uh, removable. I think it's a lovely idea, and especially you know I know I know you love your your candles. To, you know, a housewarming kind of gift. Absolutely, it? it is. Go in to the box base, so it was 18, no it wasn't, it was, is find, I'm going to pop that onto my box. And then there. And then what I'm also going to do. And just so that you're aware, I know you might be thinking, has he got it the wrong way round? I've not, because as that turns around and you tie it. Mm. Glue gel, a little bit of glue gel. And then what we can do is then we can then turn that one around. So we can then pop. That height of glue gel, it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. And then what we can do is we can then tie that one. And then it won't take us long to do the final part. Let's just tie that so it's done for. Get that one in. Get that one in. So we're going to do this one. Fantastic. Um, break for yeah. anyone? Yeah. Perfect for me. So we're going to set that one to the side now. We're going to go in of our cardstock. So when it comes to the pockets, we need some which is our white. We need some, which is baby blue. Um, and we need a little bit of the acetate that we've okay. got left over. So let's bring this one in. So what we can then do is to take our white linen cardstock so we're going to go in and we're going to cut this inches by six and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Because it's big enough. I could have done the same with the white, used one of the off cuts, but hey ho. So we're going to then cut that blue to six and a half. to five, take our acetate that we've got left over, cut six long to one and that to the side and then what we can do Drip of the navy blue, and this is when we really just want a slither. Yeah. So, so what I'm going to do, Becky, is move down to four and a quarter. Yeah. So that's given me a quarter of an inch thickness strip. Okay. So that's one, and then 
the white. So let's see, I'm going to come down to the nearest half inch. So there's down to seven and a quarter. So that's what's given me. The actual measurement is kind of irrelevant. It's just I've gone to the nearest inch. Move that one out the way, and then all that I need to also to six and a quarter and a quarter is these ones. So let's move that final bit of die cutting. So we're going. our inner panel and what I'm going to do with this one is be about half an inch because remember what I want to do is I want I'm actually going to put that at the top there to okay. neaten it off so that's going to go in to here and if you were to look at the not think that the whole lot has been made with a junior or a midi. No. You would have thought you would die yeah, cutting absolutely. machine. Yeah, good point. So we're going to feed that one in. Asked it, it's going to go onto the back. It's going to create that little bit extra structure. So if we take this one out, because these panel dies, it has need to do Becky is go in with my ruler and craft knife and I'm going to right to the edge and I'm going to cut my craft knife there. Marie said um, I, I so want to make this but I'll probably use I'm, 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 I think I'm in the same mind because that's the one I've got at home. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll definitely be. So we've got in the frosty um, in the winter. That whole idea of that craft long. Thing is, as well, Becky, is you could. Make elements from 10 different collections. Yep. All that you're doing, hard stocks, whatever it is, you're deciding what you're using. So yeah, you can go in and use whichever collections you would like. With this one here. So I'm using and I'm going to come along. And then I'm going to come and pop of acetate to the back. I'm just going to and put clear up, like completely clear acetate. But I find that having the fo white foiled snowflake in the background on top do it. So what I can do with the navy blue is I'm going to go along with my tacky glue. Keep in mind, this is going to be a pop in simple ways. So I could leave it flush with the white card, but it's nice adding a little strip. And although I'm going in with the blue, it could be. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to move that up. So on the back, what we want to do, the left hand. our red liner tape. We don't want to put any along the top, otherwise so work our way down the side like so. So that's one of them. A little bit of red showing you're not going to see here. Now this one, no die cutting, no nothing. We're going to go in with our white strip and that could 
can go along the top bit to, I've not done that, that's meant to be six and a quarter, isn't it? I've done six. He asks, does cutting into the glass mat dull your blade flaster? Flaster? Not flaster, faster. Say that again, sorry, Becky. Does um, cutting into the glass mat dull the blade on your... Oh, yes, okay. because you're gliding. If you cut into a craft map yeah. or a self healer than a glass map. Okay. So, yes, if you can invest in a glass map, it's so handy to have because you can do your mixed media and inking onto yeah. it. But what you can then also do is prolong crafting tools. It's me talking. Oh Sorry, Craig. No, don't be daft. <laughs> Gassing away. So th this is all the Winter Sparkle collection that you are um, going to be using today. So whilst this is um, a sort of bundle we put together, there are other elements um, that we're using on the show today. On the website for that. Absolutely. So what we can then do is let's bring that one in now. That is our strip. So we're going to add that one to... Well, that doesn't matter. Never mind, you can trim that bit. I can trim that bit. There we go. So let's pop... So now what we can do, same as before. So that is our top. So... And I might still just have time to do this last. Let's take our tape off. So we're going to take. And while I'm here, I'm going to do this one as well. Mm -hmm. One, two, and then three. So set all of that to the side. We're going to bring in the book. So when it comes to this one, we're going to pop that one down. So we still have a border. Yes, and that just means now what we can do is we can pop things in there. Lovely. If we take this one, we're going to come in here and we're going to overlay that. There for our white. Notice I've not stuck down the snowflakes again. I want them free flowing. In there that you can see. So that's that one done. And then what we're then going to do is we're then going to. I'm going to take our white uh, cardstock. I'm just going to refer to my instructions because I want to make sure I've got this last bit right. Winter holidays. So we've got our stamp set. So we're going to go in with winter holidays. So let's do that one. And we're also going to do parts that are going to go inside here. So this is another part, Becky, where we're saying it's optional. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not want to put... gift uh, vouchers or little notes or anything like that but because I obviously I wanted to use the I want to go five and three quarters by four and go in with navy blue and this one here we're going to go six. So that's one of them. Mm -hmm. And then we're taking another. I've got another. I do have another off cut, but to save a little bit of time. The next one, we're going to go four. Four. 
and a quarter. And we're going to go in with an off cut of the blue. by four and a half. So these are giving us our mats and layers. So let's take our stamping platform, which is here. Let's take our I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this because we are just about out of time. There is two, these are little embellishments. Okay. So you can do that after the show. I'll have shown you everything that you need to have done to create this. So we are going to go in. I'm using my tacky glue. At this point, I would use my double-sided tape, but to cut down on a little bit of time. So we're going to go in with this one, and then we'll do this bit, and that will be us. And I'll just show you the last bit you still need to do. Stamping platform, winter holiday. And for this one, you can use your midnight again, but I'm going to go in with my Noir Black. That one can go towards the top. So we can press that in. So we've got winter holiday wishes. Lovely. Christmas wishes. That one can go into there. Remove that one. Move it out the way. Bring this one in. So that one can go into there. That one can go into there. The only two things you need to do if you want to follow along with what I have done on mine three snowflakes that are within that set. I've popped three of them here. And then I've added sequins, top and bottom sequins, and one of the little charms. But overall, that is how Brilliant. we have created our box book, which would create the newly packaged Yankee Candle Wax Melts, but you can pop whatever you like in them. Fantastic. I and mean, that is absolutely beautiful. I, I, I can't believe how many different techniques you've shown us Ooh. in this time. Ooh, you have to have a cup of tea. That's been amazing. And do remember, Craig will get all of those instructions. Yes. Um, the next 10 or 15 minutes. You never know. definitely be by the end of today, <laughs> UK time. by the end of today. I do hope... Yeah, um, I do hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to be back um, later on for Monday Makers. I'm really sorry if you've had any problems, any issues. We've got all the gremlins. Yeah, I would have thought the gremlins by six o'clock, they'd be having a little nap. I, I told them, That's stop home. feeding the gremlins. Yesterday. <laughs> Maybe that's what they've been doing. But I hope you've enjoyed the show and we will see you in a couple of hours time, 6 o'clock, 1pm or 10am, depending on where you are, for Monday Makers. Bye.